Hi, I'm Keith McCoy with Solutions Pest and Lawn. You know, pest control is more than just spraying a pesticide on your property. It's also about doing a thorough inspection to help identify conducive conditions that need to be addressed to help prevent future pest problems. Today, we're gonna to walk this property, identify some of the most common conducive sites so that you know what to look for, and where to look when doing your own inspection. So beginning our inspection process, we can already see that we have a tree that's very close to the house. The tree limbs actually are touching the roof line, so we wanna make sure that we trim those back so that insects and rodents don't have access to the house itself. Also down here at the bottom, we can see that we have some very dense vegetation. We need to make sure that we trim that back because that's a perfect place for rodents to harborage. So here we have a fountain. Uh, well, I guess it, it's supposed to be a fountain, but however, it's got a lot of dirt in it, uh, moist dirt. Uh, which has tendencies to, to, to hold a lot of water, especially after heavy rainfall. This dirt's so compacted that the water's just gonna sit up on top of it, uh, which is a perfect place for mosquitoes to breed. Uh, also, you can actually see a lot of mold in here, so this soil really never has a chance to dry out. We have this piece that's up against the wall, uh, which is a perfect place for insects to harborage back behind this. Uh, as you can see, ground ivy's crawling up the walls of the house. That needs to be trimmed back as well. One of the most important things to prevent subterranean termites is to make sure that the soil level stays below the brick ledge. As you can see here, the soil level is above the brick ledge, which actually gives very easy access for termites into the structure. So we've got a couple of different things going on here. One, we have a wooden garden workbench, which is sitting directly onto the ground. So anytime you have wood to soil contact, that makes the area conducive to termites. Also, back here where the plumbing penetrates the wall, We've got an opening around that. This gives access to many different types of insects. Here on the back side of the lot, uh, we actually have a wooden fence. There's some wood rot going on here because the wood is actually touching the soil, so it's wicking up the uh, moisture from the soil itself, uh, which can make the area conducive to termites and other insects. Moving around the property, we've actually identified a sewer line. So we have a manhole cover. This is a perfect place for American cockroaches to harborage. We don't really have anything that we can treat the sewer lines with. However, we could treat the turf with either a liquid insecticide or a granular insecticide. We also have a fire pit back here. Uh, it looks like this fire pit hadn't been used in quite some time. You'll notice that there is a lot of aged wood around, which will actually draw a lot of different types of insects, such as subterranean termites, beetles, ants. We want to make sure that we pick this wood up and elevate it off the ground, maybe in a uh, a metal rack or something like that back away from the house. Inspecting the flower beds, we can see where the mulch has actually been pushed up against the house. We want to pull that back so that we can expose the slab so that we can inspect for termite tubes. Also, we have a window unit here, which is going to drip water, which is going to make this area very moist, which could actually draw other insects. So part of this house is actually elevated. We have a vent system here. Uh, and the purpose of this is to actually prevent moisture from building up up underneath side the house. Uh, with the uh, grate on there, it doesn't prevent insects from coming in. However, with the grate missing, it does allow rodents and other varmints to enter the structure. One of the things we may not think about is standing water in the back. We want to make sure we push that water towards the front. Here, we've got a low-lying area where the water's tried to drain, but yet it's just sitting here um, and this is creating a perfect place for mosquitoes to breed. So make sure that you have good drainage and get it from the back to the front. Hey, don't forget to look up. We've got a big hole up there about the size of a baseball that gives access to birds and other insects. Also, check the roof around your vents. Make sure that they're tightly sealed to the roof line. Check around your chimney. Make sure that you don't have any damage around there. We have some damage around this chimney here. We need to address it and caulk it. Now that we've completed our inspection process on this property, hopefully this gives you a better understanding for where to look and what to look for when inspecting your own. Remember, a successful control and preventative program starts with a good inspection. For more information, visit our website or one of our stores or give us a call. I'm Keith McCoy with Solutions Pest and Line. Ask us how, then do it yourself.